Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brennan Bias from Chichichecka.com and welcome to another Walkthrough Wednesday. In this week's tutorial, my goal isn't really to teach you a new effect or anything like that, which is kind of the norm, but uh, rather my goal is to introduce you guys to the idea of putting a little bit more time into something that you would uh, normally ignore or just use the default settings for. And uh, in this case, I'm referring to the black and white adjustment layer. So uh, let me just show you what I'm going on here about. Uh, normally, you would just uh, take a photo of your choosing. Uh, in this case, I've got this you know, lovely picture of my friend Marisha. I kind of uh, helped do a little photo shoot for her recently. And of course, normally what you would do is go to the adjustments panel and add in a black and white adjustment layer. And most of you would call that good or maybe change the blend mode to something like overlay to create some kind of cool contrasting effect. But uh, like I said, I want to introduce you guys to, uh, you know, just the idea of putting a little bit more time into using the black and white adjustment layer to create a style that's more unique and, uh, you know, has a little bit more pop to it. So I'm just going to turn off this default black and white adjustment layer just so I can have it as a a reference to what the defaults are and I'm gonna go back and add in a new one and uh, so basically what I like to do is to just kind of go down each of these sliders and tweaking them back and forth to see what looks good and what doesn't so obviously we have a slider for each uh, you know major color here we've got red green and blue plus the uh, combinations of each of those which are yellow cyan and magenta and basically, these sliders represent the intensity of the color as it's converted to, you know, black or white. So if I were to take the red slider, move it all the way to the left, then all of the reds in the image become black. And if I were to bump this up to the other side, all of the reds become white. So relatively simple, you know, you can do what you want. So let's just start off with the reds and see what I can do with these. Um, so in my case, I kind of like to bump these down just a little bit, and I'm keeping like uh, I'm keeping Marisha's face kind of in mind and her hair. I'm not really too worried about what's going on in the left hand side over here. And by bumping those down, I basically uh, darken up some of the colors to um, you know create some some more shadows and such. All right, so let's move on to the yellows and uh, let's start tweaking these around. So I can see that most of these yellows are showing up in some of the leaves in the, the upper hand area there. And I kind of like how that looks, but maybe not quite so intense. So maybe I'll bump that up to 162. And of course, the greens are mostly going to be within like the grass and again, the leaves. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take these down into the negatives to create like a, like a cool kind of shadowy look within the grass there. So that looks kind of cool, don't you think? And then the cyans, um, I'm trying to think where all the cyans are. Uh, let's see, so there's mostly in the sky, a little bit in the dress, and they're also very prominent in her fingernails there. So let's turn this back on and see what happens when I turn this sucker down a little bit. So I ended up making her fingernails look like they're painted black, which uh, artistically is kind of cool to me. So I might actually leave that just as it is. And um, you know what? I feel like making her dress more like a black color as well to, you know, match the fingernails. So let's bump down the blues and not too much though. So maybe somewhere in that area. And at the same time, I'm kind of getting rid of the sky, but at the same time, it's making this cool little like gradient kind of effect going on here. So I'm actually kind of liking that. And uh, the magentas, I don't think there was too many magentas. Looks like there was some like in her hair and uh, like in the posts and such. And uh, I don't really care one way or another what I do with these. I might just uh, might darken them just a little bit. But otherwise, I'm not going to mess with those too much. And so let's just take a look at the before and the after. And... I don't know, it really depends on what you like style-wise, but personally, I feel like my version is a lot more interesting than just the standard defaults there. 
And all I had to do was take a few moments, go through each of the sliders and, you know, just kind of tweak them in a way that seemed, you know, remotely interesting to me. So, you know, like, like I said, this was mostly just to introduce you guys to the idea of, you know, putting more time into something that you would, you know, normally probably just ignore. And by doing so, you can create an effect that is more unique and more interesting. And of course, you know, once you've got this done, you can always add more things on top of it. Like, um, like something that I like to do is I like to create a new layer on top of all this. That's kind of like a, a merged version of everything. And I do that with this shortcut control alt shift E and that would be command option shift E if you're on a Mac and I'll just go to filter and add a uh, Gaussian blur on here. Uh, let's make it pretty prominent actually. So about 60 and I'll just hit OK, set that to soft lights. And that kind of creates these uh, these really soft shadows on the uh, the effect here. And also, I like to duplicate this uh, this background layer here, and let's go add in a uh, let's add in a surface blur on here. And unfortunately, you can't see too well what's going on on the image, so you just have to you have to actually use this little viewfinder to to look at it. But um, I think it actually remembered my settings from the last time I used this. So it's actually in a pretty good spot. Maybe I'll dumb down the radius just a touch. So that way we would keep some of those uh, those details in there. I just really wanted to smooth things over on like the skin in the background because there were some like artifacts and such. And uh, so anyway, I've got that looking pretty good. I'll hit OK. And let's zoom on in and get a good look of uh, how this is this is turning out here. So uh, maybe I could have done a little bit more blur on there. Maybe I could just reapply the last surface blur to kind of uh, smooth things out a little bit. Okay, not too bad. So as you can see, um, here is the default version of everything. And you know, that actually looks pretty cool, like with that surface blur going on and all that. But, uh, oh, and also the the, the soft light uh, kind of helps with that. But you know, between that and that, the styles are just completely different uh, and you know, it also makes her a little bit more prominent on the background. So anyway, uh, once again, guys, this was uh, just kind of like an introduction kind of a thing. Uh, maybe you guys can take a little bit of time on your own to, you know, grab a picture, see, you know, what you can do with a black and white adjustment layer, have some fun with it. And if you make anything cool, uh, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below, or maybe you can send me a message with the with a picture that you've made using some of these ideas. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, this uh, walkthrough of sorts. If you have any suggestions for me, please leave them in the description. And of course, if you enjoyed the tutorial, just you know, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, share it with some you know friends or something like that. And that's all I've got for you guys this week. I will see you next Tuesday. Peace out.